So what was the task to create an integration? The task was uh, create was integration system. Yeah, yes, create create integration. integration system. Right, so that's where it opens up and then you have to give a name, right? int underscore test underscore to write something and then you have to choose the template right and what was the template template is nothing but like predefined connectors yes right and the place where we see it is integration template catalog we you see if, if there is anything which is there like for example let's do it today for vsp or say let's do another one which one? Yesterday we did MasterCard, right? Yeah. Today, let's see, let's let's say VSP. But I think we will not be able to do it because for this we need configuration. For all benefits, one you need to have the plans configured. You need to have employees enrolled into that plan, and and all that thing needs to be there. So that is. It's not let's see but yes we we did yesterday the mastercard one let's today do visa one okay okay so the moment you give the name of that Uh, the moment you give that, the first page which opens is the integration service. So integration service, these are the different features which are provided as part of this connector, right? Like some are by default enabled, right? Which you cannot change and some are optional. The one which are optional, you can make them, you can enable them if you want. Like it is a dynamic map service for cities. And these are all services are kind of the template related. For different template, there will be different one. Okay. So now one important thing is this document retention. You will see it a lot of times. What does this mean? Document retention means if this integration is generating or consuming any file. In document retention, you have to specify the number of days. Say, for example, you mentioned 30 days. So that means for 30 days, this file will be available in the tenant. You can download it. But after 30 days, it will it will be removed. So you'll not be able to view that file again. And we will see that. So let's enable that. The other ones are hotel airlines and cities. We don't care. Message auditing is again nothing that one and then you click on okay it opens up things like that so there are this attributes always you have to make sure that the things which are required for launch needs to be configured else they the integration will be an error right so this is all configured by default so what are integration attributes? Integration attributes are nothing but a one-time configurable value, which you configure it as per your need, right? For example, mapping of employee ID, change default mapping for employee ID. This is, so this is, these attributes again are very much this template specific, right? So this is visa. Visa VCF4 file format. So this is a standard Visa file which brings in credit card transactions, right? So now credit card transactions, say if you swipe your card at any of the vendor, what it gives, it gives the merchant ID, it gives some code, it employee ID and all that. Employee ID, it doesn't give you for your personal card, but for corporate credit card, because they have your data, from the organization, they know your employee ID, they know your name and all that stuff, that everything gets sent over in that file, right? So here, what they are saying is default mapping for employee ID. This is this field number 23. 
So this is a, a specific field in the file which they are sending, right? There is truncate zeros from employee ID and all that. So these are the attributes. How do we configure attributes? You go to related action and configure integration attributes. And there you can click on plus and enable and disable and whatever. Right? right. And you click on OK. So this is attributes which are kind of configurable one time setup for this integration. You don't change this setup every time you run the integration. Right. So it's as per the requirement. So when you get the requirement, these are the questions that you can ask the vendor or your functionality for any connector. Right now you say that. Do we have a need of truncating the zeros? Right. Do we have to do any kind of mapping and all that? So here you see last is document retention, which is by default 30, 30 days. OK, then comes the integration maps. Right. So now what is an integration map? Integration map is something which helps you in configuring internal versus external values. Example, say it is an outbound integration. OK, where you are sending data out from workday to a, to a vendor using a connector. Now in that the vendor says the requirement is for male you send M for female you send F. Right. So that way it will have that kind of map where you will say internal value is male and external value is M. Right. So this one, this particular integration is inbound because you are importing data into Workday. That's why it has external and internal. So that means in the file, if the value for this transaction type is 10 in Workday, it will be loaded as purchase. If it is 22, it will be loaded as ATM cash withdrawal. If it is 80, it will be loaded as this. Right. So map integration maps helps you in mapping workday values to the external values right and how you do it is integration system configure integration maps and here you can go and you can change whatever you want similarly other ones as well transaction status code so you have to add i'll click on plus i'll just say here test and then here is the workday value to not show Right. Don't think about what what are these values and all that. That's not our stuff. Main stuff is the concept. Think from the technical perspective that when we do a connector, what are these things? Three things are main. Always it will be there. Integration services. First thing, then attributes and then maps. That's the minimum that you have to do. Clear. And the integration is built. OK. Now to run this integration. Since it's an inbound one, right? We need to get the file from somewhere. So for that, what we need to do is we have a configuration thing of the business process. Let me open my tool. Yeah, here, right? So there is a concept called business process processes okay, business process in workday anything you do in workday any transaction you do in workday it triggers a business process right what could be the example like, for example, you hire, you terminate, you change somebody's job, right? You change compensation, right? Or say in the finance world, you create a supplier invoice or you create a supplier. You create a journal, create a customer invoice anything any transaction you do or even you create a workday account 
whatever all these are business processes so what are business processes business process which is also in short form called bp right it's a set a series of steps which gets executed in the defined order right so what is a bp it's a series of steps now let me show you that where it is we will come back to this integration again but then to search for a business process you write bp colon say we do hire right so it opens up the hire business process which is here right and then it is for different supervisory organization let's take a default one right so here if you see in this one let's see how many steps are there right there are so many so first a hire then it will check whether country is us then it goes for local employee documentation so it's a task which is to do so in this you can have different types of task like action somebody has to take an action there is also approval steps and to do steps all this this is all a functional configuration i am just giving you the basic idea about this if you have done hcm training this was part of that but here consider it just you need to know what a business process is so it is a series of step you see the order here a b c d e f all the steps execute in this order right so say if you have i had an employee it goes for some approval then manager has to do some personal information change or add the ids and all those stuff so this thing happens like this right similarly when it comes to integrations we create business process for integrations and then add steps as per our need now what are those steps those are for document retrieval document delivery and the another one is following another integration right so document retrieval when will we do document retrieval retrieval mean taking in the document right that means this is retrieval is always for the inbound integration because you need the data right to process and load into workday so document retrieval is for inbound integration then comes document delivery document delivery is delivering the document that is generated to some place so document delivery will be for outbound integration and retrieval will be for inbound integration now as part of that integration process sometimes you might have to call another integration that when this integration completes it should call another integration so that step also we can add and now if you have to club all of them then the business process is the thing okay now let me go to the tenant and then go to our integration the shortcut is int sys int underscore test underscore two all right so here we are on this integration so you go to related action there is this third option here business process create copy link you will do that right and nothing to do here just click on okay so now it opens up like this right so step a is nothing but it is just initiate so you cannot change that this will already always be there then is step b what it is doing it is saying fire integration right you can just click on okay that means this business process what it will do is it will just trigger and fire this integration that's it so but now what is our requirement that before this integration fires right 
it is an inbound integration it needs the file then only it will be able to process so that means before the integration fires we need to have a place where it can get the document so then you go to this business process open it we don't create it again workday will not stop you from doing that so always remember if you have created the business process once then you go to the business process directly although it will still give you an option that you can again create copy so it will create multiple and business process is an object which you cannot delete you can only deactivate right so always make sure if it is created then you go to that and then you do here edit business process edit definition okay now what we will do is between a and b we need to have another line for getting the document right so what we will do is click on plus make this step as b and change this b to c and in the type we will select a service here and what will be the service will be document retriever okay because it is inbound and it needs to trigger before the fire integration i will have a step called b and change the service one to c and this one will be document retrieval and i'll click on okay right now it is giving me error error is what that you have it is saying hey mr you have added a step of document retrieval but you have to configure that okay so what you do is now you see a button here configure document retrieval so you click here click on okay now he, here you see so the first thing is document retention policy which i already told you it is about that how many days the document will be there in the tenant for downloading let me keep it 30 minimum is 1 maximum is 180 meaning 6 months that's the max let's keep it 30 and then there are two options one is group to manually attach that either you can attach it manually right you can choose a group group here is like integration administrator right or any any administrator so whoever is that admin will get the notification to attach a file okay anyhow we will use this but let's see the other configuration the other thing is retrieve from external location right now first is file name pattern that what is the name of the file that you want to retrieve right so for example the vendor says that the file name since it is visa right the visa mentioned the file name will be visa transactions underscore y y y y m m m m d d dot txt right say for example this is the name right now you cannot the meaning the, it is dynamic right so today it will be 22nd tomorrow it will be 23rd so you cannot hard code the date here right you cannot hard code the name so what you will do is you will do visa underscore transactions and then you will put just star so that means star means anything after that okay so visa transactions so it will check if the file name contains visa visa transactions it will pick that up right or if you want to specify then you can put in the end text so that means visa transactions in between there can be anything and in the end it should be dot txt right now say the file name is yymmdd underscore visa transactions dot txt so what we will do is we will do the star first then do visa underscore transactions dot txt like that so star is a kind of a wild character for setting up this name right so you can keep anything there now then comes this is nothing we don't do common content type and all that then comes the transport type 
how you want to retrieve that file. So you have these many options. You have FTP, where you can put the FTP address. You have, again, SFTP, right? SFTP is there, and then you have this FTP over SSL. So these are, again, different protocols. Depending on what vendor prefers, we can support this. This, this one is REST. What is this error? Enter a specific file name pattern while character cannot be used for REST. So it is saying if you are using REST, then you cannot use the star. That's what it is saying, right? So you give the REST endpoint, user ID, password, and all that. Or you can use Amazon S3, simple storage service. So it is the Amazon S3 bucket and all that stuff. You need the bucket ID, access key, secret key, and all region. Right? Most common used is the SFTP, right? Where you give the username, password, and that's it. Then you have another configuration here, which is delete after retrieval. That means that if, say, we are using SFTP, after the file is retrieved, this integration, if the user which they have provided has the access, and we select this one, integration will delete the file from that folder. And why we do that is, suppose every day there is one file coming, right? So if you don't delete it today, tomorrow there will be two files. Then will be three files. Every day integration will process all the files again and again. That's why delete after retrieval is there, right? And then if the file vendor says it is a sensitive file, we need to have the encryption on that, then Workday supports PGP encryption. Create PGP key private key, key pair. This is based on the vendor details. We can configure that. And it's a simple, simple configuration. They will give you a certificate. You will have to just configure that, right? If I click on that, you have to give a name. Test. Click on OK. And that's it. It created a, this one. Now you, you will have to give the public key to them. Right. Then comes this restricted to. Sometimes you might have seen in your career, in your testing and all that, right? When you are in development, you will be using a separate SFTP folder. But when you are in production, you will be following a separate folder, right? Even the username might be different. That's why Workday has provided this restricted to option. Say so this is my test. SFTP, right? I have to give the name. So this is SFTP colon slash slash x dot x dot x, right? Something like that. Test. Right. So I've given something here. Restricted to is, I'll say, implementation, right? So that means if I'm running this integration and the integration, the tenant is implementation, it will automatically take up this configuration. I will add another one. Again, I will give some here test. Whatever. I'll select SFTP. Here I will give my production, say, SFTP. I delete off. Now I can choose sandbox and production for example this and i click on okay now what will happen is i have two configurations here so even though if i migrate this integration i move this integration to production and i run it there the production one will execute but the same integration if you run it in implementation then the implementation one will trigger yeah that's the benefit of of this Again, if I go here, click on OK to show you that we have environment restrictions. So whatever is there, right, implementation and your tenant is implementation and you trigger it, the file retrieval will happen from this configuration. And you have another one for production. So when you run it in production, it will take the file from this folder and this name. Clear concept of retrieval uh
Actually, I missed. Uh, how you? I mean, after you select the document retrieval, uh, this form mm -hmm. will open. Actually, I I missed there. Actually, can you show me one? Yes. One time? It will create a button there. So if I click on cancel here, you see this button. Okay. Okay. So once it will you come automatically. Yeah. yeah. Once you specify yeah, yeah. document retrieval. And uh, this configure and you, document retrieval will be there. Okay. Right. This will come up and you open, then that page will come up where you have to do all this configuration. Right. Okay. So, so this is particularly for this integration only, this document retrieval. Correct. Yes. Okay. This is only for this integration. Got it. Right. Now, now this SFTP is test, so I cannot have access to this, but Workday gives you a very one more good thing. You don't need to do any coding anything here right it is all configuration Correct. but say the vendor has given you this sftp details and all that and vendor says okay try connecting and let me know if you're able to connect how do you do that say you're in peoplesoft you have to connect to sftp and all that how do you test I i'm not peoplesoft <laughs> sorry yep jyoti how do you test or bibas how do you test sftp Usually, I mean, so, uh, the, they will put the connection details and then test it, right? Where? Where? I mean, any 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 of the configuration place. I mean, uh, suppose say, right. You you correct. You use different tools like WinSCP, yeah. or FileZilla, yeah. right? Exactly. You put your or... details and and correct connect. Now, Workday says. No need to install those tools. You do this configuration, right? And you come to the integration. Okay. Once you have configured, you click on the related action integration. Now you see below the launch, there is this test transport. Click on that and automatically whatever you have configured in your retriever or delivery, it will come up here. You click on okay. And here is the connect option. It is just giving the test of connect. Click on OK. It will start making that connection and it will tell you whether you are able to make the connection or not. So no need to install WinSCP and all that. That's really cool. So, OK. So now and then one thumb rule, my experience. If it takes long, that means it is error. Right. So here it is. It is error because why I have given a dummy endpoint and all that, right? right. So it will give all that stuff. You can. Yeah. So all the logs yeah. also is it's going here. All right. Cool. So now we cannot connect to SFTP, but say we want to run our integration. So the other way is instead of instead of specifying the SFTP, let's use the other method of 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 group to manually attach say i will write here integration admin and that's it i'll click on okay that means what will happen is when i run this integration any user let me open this in new tab in integration administrator is a is a role and you see here members these all are the members so i think yeah this user is a member so when i run the integration I will get the notification to attach the file. So, okay. So now the retrieval is done and then fire integration is there. Okay. So let's go to our integration. And now if I click on related action, integration and launch run now. Okay. Okay. Right. So it give me this option of attach document, right? So now I can click on this and it on my desktop, if I have created, say, a test file, let me try to see if I have a test file created. New test.txt test. I have this file created, test.txt test. Let me let me attach. I'll say attach and then I will desktop test open, 
right? So this is attached here, completed. Now here it is saying you have submitted. I'll click on view details, details and processes. So it is processing. I will click here. Now since my file is blank and all that, right? Let's see how it behaves. So this is the refresh button. You can refresh and see the integration is processing. Okay. This is, you can click on the parent event. This is the integration event. And if you click on parent event once, I want to show you what is happening. Right, so you see the event document is this. Now you see here, this is a, a clickable link. Right, so if you click on this, it will download the file. So till how many days will you be able to download this is the day which you specify the number 30. Then for next 30 days, you will be able to download it. After 30 days, it will become like this, a blank, a black one without the hyperlink. So you will not be able to download after 30 days. Okay, that's what the retention policy does. Now let's see why is it taking so long. It's complete. I want this to fail. I want this to fail. Fail. Okay, so this is running and then you are out. You are on the home page again. To see the events of that integration, you just search your integration. Is this one here? Right? Go to related action, integration system and integration events. And click on OK. It will show all the events which has happened on this integration. Right? So right now it is running. This one, child processing and all that, it is somewhere stuck. Then let's see. So this was for inbound. Suppose the same integration is now, assume it is outbound. Okay. <clears throat> then what will be the change? In this one, let me edit. Click on business process, edit definition. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what will be the difference? Logical you will not have to retrieve anything, right? Because it is outbound integration. That means it is fetching data from Workday and then it has to send the data out. So this retrieval will not be there. You can delete this. Fire integration will obviously be the first step, right? After A, which is initiate, and then will be the fire integration. And then there will be third step C. Again, the type will be service. And instead of document delivery, this time it will be uh, instead of retrieval, it will be the document delivery and you click on OK. Again, the same kind of configuration box will come up. You can click on this, click on OK, and it will show up similar page. Right now here, since it's delivering, you have to just specify what option. Amazon S3, AS2, email, FTP, Google Cloud Storage, and SFTP, whatever. SFTP, again, give the SFTP details. Same thing. Again, you here have restriction. You can configure it for implementation separate, sandbox separate, production separate. Or you can do it one. Right? So this is the delivery part. Yep, here you see the documents. You have two options from this integration process, right? Because we want to deliver the integration, whatever is generated by the integration. So it'll be this. I'm having one query. So yes, 
in my org when i see like uh, uh, in a sing for a single integration uh, we will have three uh, sftp for uh, prod sftp for sandbox and uh, one for implementation how it is decided like uh, which one to hit like prod and while testing uh, i know somewhere it asked right uh, uh, whether you need to select uh, like when you click for that test but uh, while uh, generally running integration how it decides whether what to take uh, whether prod uh, sftp it should take or uh, implementation or sandbox right so that's a good question so the tenant right now the tenant i am in if you see here in the green it says implementation okay right yeah also in the url if you see here impl right yeah implementation yep that means it is implementation tenant mm -hmm. for production it will not have impl it will have no. just wd3 hyphen workday correct and for sandbox it will be written here as sandbox in sandbox implementation yeah so if you are running it in that tenant it will pick if there okay. is environment restriction for that tenant mm -hmm. but while uh, we just wanted to test the connection what you have shown previously you can do like it. When, yeah when we connect in, in uh, that click you on can do it yeah it asks for you like have all the three options all the three you options have, it's asked right yes you can test all the three okay okay no coding till now and we have created integration we have retrieved the document we have delivered the document right now say another thing if you have to send an email right very common example if you have run ran an integration right let's see the integration events whether it's still or see now it's failed So if I click on this, this is how you see the integration event status. The status is failed. Here is the error number one, but it is hyperlink. Click on this, and you see the following unexpected error has occurred: invalid value, the input document cannot be processed, and all that. Why? Because it was expecting a a proper formatted file, and we have just the word. test written there so that's why that's the because it's work day delivered connector everything the proper error message is there you can see in the messages what it has processed and you can retrieve the log file here and you can see the logs and all those stuff right okay and who ran it at what time it was initiated or and when it failed all that will come up here okay now say the requirement is if the integration is failed or is in error and all that it should send an email to the support team right there will be a support team yeah so that they get to know otherwise who will get to know if integration is failing right so for that again no coding needed let me open the integration and then show you how we configure the notification so you go to integration system and then configure integration notification right so it says either trigger on launch that means as soon as the integration is triggered it will send a notification or on a particular status that integration it's either aborted completed completed with error completed with warning failed so say we only want for failed and for errors for rest we don't want so you can choose then is recipient you can choose that who initiated it and all that aborted by by person and all that we don't do this or you can specify a group like that integration administrator group and all that normally we specify directly the email test at the rate test.com whatever you specify that then you write the message content so this is the subject 
so integration blah 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 has failed right so if you write the subject and in the body please verify the integration link for more details something like that right and done click on okay attachments you can specify if you want to attach the logs and all that integration attachment and all that you can also send the logs so this click on okay and done the notification is set so whenever this now this integration will run you can see another tab coming up here now along with business process you have notification that okay if the integration is completing with error or failed it will send a notification with this subject and this text to this email right but now that text is hard coded right so worked it thought about it and what they did is you can make it dynamic so that this is a text you click on plus now i want to say the integration i want to give the name so i don't have to write the name of the integration there is this external field i can choose integration system right now it will automatically at run time fetch the name of the integration which is int test 2 then i will write the text here as and then again the status i don't need to write completed or completed with error how will i know then i'll click on plus there is another one integration event status or say integration status integration event status right this will give you or they're completed with error warning or whatever right so this becomes dynamic now again here you can also do the same dynamic stuff if you want you can add a field like integration event this will give you the link of the integration integration event link and that's that's it you click on okay and you're done so now it's dynamic you can use the same thing with all the integration right because at one time it will fetch the name the status and the event today what we have done i'll stop here we have seen what is integration services the integration attributes integration maps what a business process is how do we set up retrieval delivery right retrieval we have seen how to attach file if we don't have sftp and all that how to see the status integration event then how to configure the notification and all that okay then guys and then we'll connect again